Hi everybody, uh, Dr. Chow here. Um, you can see this uh, weird uh, background because I'm currently actually on course uh, in the UK. I just wanted to take some time to film uh, because uh, this particular video is way overdue. It's actually to share about a particular rescue case um, back in uh, those days at uh, SPCA. This cat is called Baby Girl and then uh, she had a very interesting disease and uh, this was during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic and there was uh, various challenges that we met during Circuit Breaker. Just wanted to share the story that happened during that period of time and here goes the intro. Struggle. Because the whole medical supply chain is affected, they may not be able to get the drugs they need. To show up to work and then realizing that actually you cannot help the animal, it's painful. Uh. Like today, a street cat nicknamed Baby Girl is brought in with a fungal infection that requires immediate attention. Baby Girl came with the skin lesion, this big wound on the left cheek. At the beginning, it wasn't so big, but then due to the delay when we were trying to get the appropriate medication, the fungus uh, slowly spread. Uh. While ordinarily Baby Girl would have started treatments within a month, Dr. Chow estimates that he will need two months to find the right drugs. It was actually quite devastating because day by day, the cat's condition was deteriorating. Dr. Chow has finally found affordable medication to treat baby girl's fungal infection, but it comes a month late. Because of the delay, it will take baby girl nine months to recover instead of five. Dr. Chow can only administer the medication, send the street cat to foster care, and hope for the best. So this is baby girl now. The major wound on the left cheek has significantly reduced in size and we're hoping that in the next few weeks it will reduce even more and eventually might just disappear. So let's dive in deeper into what actually happened. So baby girl came in with a wound at the side of the face and we started on antibiotics to uh, treat what we thought was a uh, bacterial infection but unfortunately after some time the wound seems to be uh, not healing in fact it was growing bigger it was spreading so the next step was uh, proceeding to surgery to take a skin biopsy and sending off uh, the samples to, to the lab for further analysis so when the lab report came back the report actually highlighted that it was actually a fungal infection there was a few likely causes and the uh, most likely cause stated in the biopsy report is cryptococcus infection so the next step for us was to start on an antifungal medication called itraconazole which is a very commonly used antifungal medication but after being on itraconazole for a while, we realized that actually uh, the medication was not working at all. The wound was actually spreading to other parts of the body. So then we started to panic. Because as part of the fungal infection, baby girl was uh, starting to deteriorate. The, the skin started to have more open wounds. And then uh, most importantly, she was starting to uh, have uh, reduced appetite and she was starting to lose weight. So we started to look for stronger antifungal medication but unfortunately, this was during circuit breaker and at the point in time, the worldwide shortage of uh, various medical supplies and there were few antifungal medications that we wanted to get our hands on which we couldn't. Uh, we, we called out to various human hospitals to ask for access to this medication but they actually replied and got back to us that uh, those medications were currently being reserved for human use only because they were unsure about the logistics and supply of uh, those particular medication. And at this, at this point in time, uh, time was ticking as the fungal inf infection was uh, spreading and getting worse and baby girl was getting weaker and weaker day by day. So at one point, baby girl's condition deteriorated until she was only 1.8 kg. As an adult cat, she should be weighing at least 3 kg. So it actually reflected how poor her body condition was. To cut a long story short, 
subsequently we were looking for uh, antifungal medication called fluconazole and then we found a medical supplier that was able to sell us the drug but we realized that it was going to be very very expensive in the end it was going to amount us to like a few hundred dollars a month uh, just to provide this medication and for a cryptococcus infection, it can commonly take to at least uh, nine months for the patient to recover. So a few hundred dollars multiplied by nine months, it can easily be a few thousand dollars. So then it wasn't a sustainable solution and we started to source for other solutions. Interestingly, what we actually find is that as time goes by, circuit breaker ended and it became phase one and the supply chain for medical supplies improved. As we were calling various hospitals and human pharmacies, we realized that Unity actually started to stock fluconazole again. And they were able to sell us the drug much cheaper than our own medical suppliers. This actually also reflects how in human medicine, some of the medications are priced cheaply due to um, one, economics of scale, like they are able to procure medications for all their branches at a specific quantity and thus are able to get better pricing and also uh, various medications actually have government subsidies. So it, it's actually quite ridiculous that um, when we get the medication from a medical supplier, it actually is much more expensive than buying from Unity itself. But uh, this is how it, how it was and then uh, we subsequently just purely got the medication from Unity. And uh, as we started the medication, we started to see uh, marked improvement. The wounds on baby girl uh, start to close and her appetite started to improve. And um, the tricky part was as her condition improved and as all the wounds healed, the, the last wound that was unfortunately stagnating was the wound that was first there. So the wound on the left side of the cheek took the longest to heal and that became how we assessed how long she needed to be on the medication for. And what we also realized was she needed to be on an e-collar for most of the time because she commonly will scratch this area here um, because it was itchy. So that was also how we judged whether the fungal infection has healed or not. We always knew that Cryptococcus can take some time to recover. So around the one year mark, we realized that the wounds have completely healed. But interestingly, whenever we tried to remove the e collar she started to scratch her face again, especially her left cheek, which was where the original wound was so it was actually quite puzzling then we started to wonder if maybe even though the wound has healed the fungus was still hiding somewhere in her body and then uh, we just put the e-collar back on and then just continued the fluconazole antifungal medication and then the wound will heal we'll take off the cone and then she'll scratch again so this happened a few times over a few months and then it was very puzzling um, so we tried to look for an objective metric to find out whether she has healed from the fungal infection or not. So we collected some blood, we sent it off to the lab and this is also quite interesting. We found that the, the, the animal lab was very very expensive for cryptococcus. It was like a few hundred dollars. So how we did was uh, we sent the blood to a human lab because humans can also be infected by cryptococcus and then it cost us like less than a hundred dollars. But the blood test report actually came back as negative for cryptococcus. So then the next step was I consulted a, a internal medicine specialist about baby girl's case to find out uh, what was the next best step forward. So when I collated all the data and sent it for her assessment, she actually looked at the biopsy report and the biopsy report actually, as I mentioned earlier, lists a few different possible causes of the fungal infection and then cryptococcus is the most likely cause. And then we just assumed that it was cryptococcus. And then she said that what if it's actually it's not cryptococcus, but it was actually one of the other subsequent fungal infection, then in that case, of course, it is negative for cryptococcus because it was never cryptococcus to begin with. Then we were like, oh, then what we're supposed to do now? And then, then, it, then we were thinking 
do we test for the other subsequent fungal infections but the challenging part is then the best time to do the test for the fungal infections was at the beginning when the fungus infection was as it was but then now baby girl has been on an antifungal medication for like more than a year so then uh, are we going to spend all the money to test all the different tests and it was a conundrum it was very puzzling and we were very reluctant to spend more money because by this point in time we have spent unfortunately like thousands uh, on on this treatment plan on uh, all the tests and all the antifungal medications but then the question of does she, baby girl need to be on antifungal for the rest of her life or what we're we gonna do next because she remains to be itchy so this period of time while i was asking around for uh, different vets opinion and trying to read up on uh, fungal infections um, baby girl was staying at a foster home and uh, she unfortunately had to wear an e-collar for most of the time and uh, she remained on fluconazole as an antifungal medication. Um, then eventually I reached out to a veterinary dermatologist, a specialist of, uh, for skin, and he suggested to start baby girl on a food trial. So basically uh, like a feline uh, hypoallergenic or allergenic diet. So his hypothesis at the point in time was that baby girl has some form of food allergy and because of that the skin immunity uh, became uh, poor, compromised and then some fungus in the environment caused an extremely extremely bad infection that spread the rest of the body and uh, at one point nearly killed her. So we hit this advice and we started on an allergenic diet and interestingly um, at the two month mark I started to notice that she started to scratch less. So what we did next was uh, stopping the antifungal medication and then we monitor her condition and true enough uh, baby girl remained itch free uh, even though we stopped the medication so the veterinary dermatologist hypothesis is true so it means that she had an skin allergy and then because of the skin allergy some fungus in the environment took the opportunity to cause an infection so the infection was not the primary cause the infection was actually secondary to an underlying allergy uh, lucky for us and lucky for baby girl this story has a happy ending actually this video was to create some awareness because baby girl um, had some difficulty finding an adopter but unfortunately because it took so long for us to get this video out um, by now baby girl has already been adopted uh, but uh, just wanted to still make this video because is so to sort of uh, celebrate her triumph uh, because she really experienced this drastic change where seriously she really looked like a walking zombie and she was uh, in such a poor condition and she really recovered well and rise like a phoenix and then now she's just a happy uh, home indoor cat as if none of this ever happened and uh, truly I am very happy for her and this is probably one of the hardest cases I experienced at SPCA because it took so long for her to recover and then um, it was such a difficult journey trying to look for the correct solution and looking for the correct medication and it was truly a team effort and uh, I am glad it went well. Uh, I hope you find this story interesting and look forward to uh, see you next one if you would like to find out more or if you have any questions you leave a comments below and uh, remember to like and subscribe bye bye